Hello everyone, welcome to the SQL training case study number 18 on table access by index row ID. So this is the question one of my students asked me about table access by index row ID. The question was, if we are already using an index on a column or on a specific table, why there is a still need of having a table access by index row ID? Or basically why the execution plan shows a table access by index row ID operation when the same table is being accessed or is already being accessed by a specific index of that same table. So I thought I will create a quick case study video out of this so that I can be able to explain in a much better fashion. So this is the simple select statement. I have taken a very basic uh, example. Select employee ID, comma first name from employees E, where E dot phone number is equal to this number, and employee ID is between 100 and 175. Now in this example, uh, for the employees table, we have an index on the employee ID column, but we don't have an index on the phone number. So going back with the fundamental approach, start with such a column in the where part of the clause, which qualifies for the least number of rows. Now we all know phone number is a unique column. Ideally, Oracle should access the employees table on the phone number because this will give only one row. But unfortunately, we don't have an index created on the phone number column. So that's the reason why Oracle will go with the e.employee ID because it's a primary key and already an index is already available on employee ID column by default. Now again, it is fetching from 100 to 175. So that means that for the employees table, the Oracle can access the employees table using the index on the employee ID column and it will get 77 rows from 100 to 177, 175. So that's the reason why you see this index operation on the employee ID and it is expecting 77 rows out of it. Now, you see this table access by index row ID operation here, right? So this has came because from the employees table, Oracle was only able to access the employee ID information. It still needs the phone number, correct? So what it will do is, it has to go to each and every employee ID. For example, it will go to employee ID 100. It will check what is the phone number of that employee ID. If it is this number, then that row will be kept. If this is not that number, then it will be discarded, right? So clearly employee ID 100 is not having this phone number. So this row will be discarded. So that means it has to actually go to that specific row ID of employee ID equal to 100, check for its phone number to see whether it matches with this value or not. So that's the reason why table access by index row ID is is coming into picture here correct you can see that it is also coming as part of the filter operation e dot phone number is equal to this so that it can fetch only the desired phone number of a specific employee rather than selecting all the 177 employees here correct so it will go to employee 151 it will go to the row id of employee 151 and it will exactly match with this phone number and that's the reason why only employee ID is equal to 151 will be given as an output. So the table access by index row ID basically comes as part of the operation in order to fetch the employee ID, in order to fetch or in order to retrieve the phone underscore number columns value. So that's the sole purpose here. Because of this, even though we have an index on employee ID, we still need a table access by index row ID to fetch the phone number information of all the employee IDs. Now, even if we didn't had a phone number here, and if we just had where a dot employee ID between 100 and 175, we would still see the table access by index row ID information here. Why? Because in the select part of the clause, it still needs the employee ID, which is already accessed, but it also needs e dot first name. We didn't have accessed the first name column value for all these respective employee IDs. So that's the reason why you will still see a table access by index row ID in order to fetch the first name, even though you don't have a phone number in the where part of the clause. So I hope this case study has helped you to understand what table access by index row ID means and how you can interpret this operation in the execution plan. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe.